welcome, welcome, welcome to day 12. Today's intention is mantra or mantra. <clears throat> you got to give it some dazzle, right? So a mantra or a mantra is something that we've probably all heard before. Some people also call it a motto, very simple, similar to a mantra. A mantra though has intention, power, emotion, vulnerability, connection, authenticity. It has a lot of energy that's attached to what might otherwise just be a simple phrase or collection of words, right? When you think of a mantra, you think, oh, you know, this is something that I say to myself, something that I believe in, something that was perhaps divinely downloaded or something that I heard somewhere or a quote that I read and said, you know what, I'm gonna make that my mantra. A mantra is also a prayer of devotion. It's a, an expression of unconditional love for a creator, something greater than yourself, source, God, goddess, universe, whatever you call it. So a mantra is also a relational phrase. It's developing a relationship between you and your highest and greatest self and your creator. So when you think of a mantra for your life, you might have several. You might have several different ones that serve different purposes and show up in different ways. One type of mantra is in Sanskrit which is of course an ancient language and related to divinity and the practice of Hinduism and also just overall ancient languages like ancient languages sometimes go. So I'm not gonna give you a whole Sanskrit lesson right now, but just know that Sanskrit is often the language of yoga. It is the language of meditation in a lot of ways. So you'll hear a lot of terminology throughout this course and the terminology is coming from a place of Sanskrit, but it is not a language that's commonly spoken. I'll give you that. One of my favorite mantras I learned when I was in yoga teacher training, and this particular mantra is in Sanskrit, and the mantra is Om Namo Gurudev Namo. And what this means is I recognize the divine wisdom, the ultimate creator of the universe, God, goddess, source, I recognize the divine wisdom and I honor its presence in my life. So when we think of times in our lives where we're feeling scared, lonely, disconnected, we're afraid, sometimes the only thing that we can do is to call out to the universe and honor its presence, call out to God and honor its presence, call out to goddess and honor its presence and saying, I honor you and I recognize the presence in my life. And while right now I have no idea what I'm going to do next, I know that starting here in a place of honor and devotion is a good place to start. So when you think of mantras for your life, you also want to think of them as something that's something you can grab onto, something that can anchor you when you feel lost, when you feel scared, when you feel scattered, when you, when you feel unsure. You can come back to the mantra that you've created for your life and you can let that be your foundation to get you back on track. So a mantra that I want to share with you is Om Namo Gurudev Namo. Now you can say it over and over again, or sometimes you can sing it. The thing with mantras is that they're much like prayers, hymns, songs, songs of joy, songs of devotion, things that you sing that make you feel closer to God, closer to goddess, closer to universe, closer to source. In yoga, there is a practice of chanting. And sometimes people chant and they're like, oh, I don't know about all that chanting stuff. I don't do that. I'm a Christian, we don't chant. Well, Christians sing. Buddhists chant. Buddhists also sing. Some Hindis sing, they call it kirtan. There's lots of different ways to show devotion. And a mantra is part of that. So whatever mantra you come up with, however you choose to express it, it is important that it's vocalized. The practice of mantra is a vocal practice of meditation. So different from some of the other elements of meditation that we've learned that are more about silence and stillness, maybe breath control. A mantra meditation is a spoken meditation. It's a devotional meditation that we use our words. We use our mouths, we use our throat chakra. So I'm going to share a couple of my mantras with you. And of course, 
at the end, you'll get to create your own mantras. One of my mantras that I learned from a great teacher, Louise Hay, she is the author of a book called You Can Heal Your Life, and that was a huge impact on my, on my life and helped me to develop a, a journey of self-care and self-awareness. One of the mantras that I, that I borrowed from Louise Hay is, I am happy, I am whole, I am complete. I am happy, I am whole, I am complete. An important part about mantra expression is the intention behind vocalizing it, saying it out loud. I always like to say mantras at least three times. Three is a number of wholeness and completion. Three is a reminder of the, of the three elements that live in our lives, our body, our mind, and our soul. So when you create a mantra, once you write it down, maybe you have it memorized eventually, but once you write it down and you read it, you want to say it to yourself out loud three times. Another mantra that I share that I picked up from Abraham Hicks is, everything is always working out for me. Everything is always working out for me. Everything is always working out for me. Now notice how you feel when you recite a mantra. See if anything happens in your body. Is there a sensation of pride? Is there a sensation of joy? Sometimes you say these mantras and everything is exactly seeming like it's working out, right? Sometimes you say these mantras and you're like, oh man, I am happy-ish. I am kind of whole and I'm almost complete, right? But we have to talk ourselves into stuff sometimes. Sometimes we have to reset ourselves and a mantra is a great way to do that. Another great mantra that I like that I designed is the universe is always conspiring in my favor. The universe is always conspiring in my favor. The universe is always conspiring in my favor. Sometimes a mantra might be something that you've read. I know a lot of people who read the Bible have scripture that is their mantra that they have taken, that they have wrapped in love and, and commitment and they've made it their own. That's just as, as great as writing your own. Another one of my favorite mantras is prosperity finds me with ease and efficiency. Prosperity finds me with ease and efficiency. Prosperity finds me with ease and efficiency. You can add movement to your mantra if that's what makes you feel good. And the last one I want to share is, I am surrounded by love. I am surrounded by love. I am surrounded by love. So your meditation for today, your assignment, I should say, for today is to write a mantra of your own. Write a mantra that is claiming something in your life, being conscious about the language that you're using, you're inviting, you're allowing, you're creating, you're claiming. And I invite you to write your mantra and read it aloud. Read it in front of the mirror. Stand in the mirror, look yourself in the eye and say, prosperity always finds me with ease and efficiency. The universe is always conspiring in my favor. I am happy, whole, and complete. Say it with chest, as they say. <laughs> That's your assignment for today, is to create a mantra that gives you a sense of devotion, that gives you a sense of power. Wrap it in unconditional love and commitment and make it your own. As always, may you be blissful.